Skyrim recently turned 13 this year. But despite its age and thousands upon thousands of wiki articles, Skyrim still has mysteries that remain unsolved. And today, we're going to be taking a look at a few of these unsolved mysteries. Number 1. Rorikstad Although every hold in Skyrim has its fair share of the paranormal, no town or city is quite as sinister as Rorikstad. This settlement near White Run is unassuming enough on the surface, but the closer you look, the stranger things get. Despite its isolation, Rorikstead is one of the most prosperous settlements in all of Skyrim, and with this being an Elder Scrolls game, that can only mean one thing – Daedric worship. Hints of this demon retaking place are scattered throughout the town. First are the soul gems, which are scattered across all homes. Then there are the villagers themselves, who all claim that the village's prosperity is all thanks to hard work and the blessing of the divines, but none of these would make sense. There are no shrines or places of worship to be seen, and while hard work can go a long way, it cannot enrich otherwise infertile soil. But you know what can? Human sacrifice. One of the most telling clues that points towards this being the case is in the manner of the village founder, Rorik. Inside, not only can we see various soul gems scattered about, but we can also find the book Spirit of the Daedra hidden under a countertop. This is one of the rarest books in the game, with the only other copy being found in Apocrypha. So, it's like that while founding his settlement, Rorik brought his Daedric worship with him. With hard work, persistence, and a bit of trapping human souls and offering them to the Daedra, Rorik made a prosperous little town for himself. Number 2. Kagrenzel While at first it's interesting to explore the structures of a bygone race, once you see one dwarven ruin, you've seen them all. However, there are outliers to this fact, and none are more mysterious than Kagrenzel. Found on the far east side of the map, Kagrenzel is one of the most peculiar dungeons in the game. Upon entering, you'll find a stack of bodies all lying dead before a mysterious orb. If you interact with this orb, it'll fly around you and play one of the most annoying sounds known to man before it entraps you, and the floor beneath you collapses. From there, you'll fall from a drop that's as high as the throat of the world, before you finally land in a body of water and find yourself in a Falmer camp. And that's all there is to this ruin, which leaves us with so many questions. The reasoning behind its construction can be explained in a journal from the Elder Scrolls Online. The journal, called In Pursuit of Mavnag, explains that Kagrenzel is likely a holdout made to lure thieves that wanted to steal the treasures of Dwemer. One such treasure was an ancient tablet known as the Wrathstone, which was believed to have once been kept in Kagrenzel for a time. But that only answers one question. We still don't know the story behind the strange orb, why the entire surface is hollowed out, or why the bandits were killed on the spot while you were dropped down the hatch. Number 3. Maven's Black Sacrament Maven Blackbriar is one of the most powerful characters in all of Skyrim, and it's no secret that her fingers are in a lot of pies. However, Maven has secrets that even she dares not reveal. In the basement of the Blackbriar Manor, we can find a room that has all the necessities for a black sacrament, and a note written directly to Astrid to boot. This note not only shows how incompetent of a person Astrid is, but it also opens up the question, who does Maven want dead? Maven has more enemies than there are ways to die, so it's anyone's guess as to who the unlucky person was that got a contract for the head. However, the most likely candidate is Christoph Bartlett. Christoph is a business associate of Marvin's, who we only ever hear about through notes exchanged by the two. These talk about how business has sullied their friendship and how Christoph wants to make amends for an expensive mistake he caused. The last time we ever hear about Christoph is from a final letter to him from Maven, which is eerily nice considering who's writing it. Considering that Christoph used to be close to Maven, then made a mistake that left Maven in a rage and is never heard from or seen since, one of two likely scenarios occurred. Either the last thing Christoph saw was the end of an assassin's blaze, or he realized that things weren't right and left Skyrim for good. Number 4. Narfi's Killer On the surface, Ivarstead is a quiet settlement with nothing much going on for it, other than acting as a place to rest up before taking the 7,000 steps to the throat of the world. But upon further inspection, it's clear that Ivarstead has a bad case of murder. It began with the disappearance of Raider, whose skeletal remains can be found at the bottom of a nearby river. But before Raider's brother, Narfi, has any time to mourn, a contract for his life is given to you during the Dark Brotherhood questline. 
And that leaves us with one question. Who wants Nafi dead? While your other contracts are vampires, horrible bosses, and annoying bards, Nafi is a homeless beggar who disturbs no one. At least that's how it seems at first glance. Many people could be the culprit, but a theory by Reddit user Norman Normal is the most compelling answer and explains why the killer was Wilhelm. With compelling evidence, the post theorizes that Wilhelm is in fact a werebear, a lycanthropic creature that, despite being plentiful in Skyrim, is only ever seen in Solstheim. Wilhelm supposedly infected Narfi sometime after arriving in Iverstedt. Raider found out about Narfi's lycanthropy and tried to find the right herbs to cure them, but was accidentally killed by Narfi. A combination of guilt and lycanthropic hunger drove Narfi insane, to the point where he doesn't remember Raider's death. Now, where does Wilhelm come into all of this? After Narfi killed Raider, Wilhelm knew Narfi was dangerous and needed to be dealt with. Believing it would be best to keep his disease a secret, he hires an assassin to do his dirty work. Number 5. Letters from a Friend Skyrim lets you make all kinds of friends, but their charm typically outweighs their usefulness. These companions will constantly get in the way of your strikes, block for no reason, and activate so many traps that you'd think they're depressed. In fact, the only friend that seems to be of any use at all is one who never reveals their face. In fact, we don't know anything about this self-proclaimed friend, since we only hear about them through mysterious letters. These cryptic messages will point you to word walls whose location should be unknown to the public. This friend also seems to know exactly where you are at all times, even down to the most obscure caves. This kind but ominous gesture is all in the name of you getting more powerful, and why this character would want the Dragonborn to become stronger and stronger has led to many theories as to who this anonymous friend is. The first and easiest answer is Delphine. Not only is her lifelong mission to protect the Dragonborn, but she also reveals herself as the author of one of these letters from a friend during the Horn of Jurgen Windcaller quest. So, it has to be her, right? Well, some people are still not convinced. Not only would it be impossible for Delphine to know the whereabouts of the Dragonborn at all times, but the courier that delivers it to you specifically mentions a he when asked who is sending it. This has led fans to believe that the author of these letters is none other than Hermaeus Mora himself. And while that might sound far-fetched, it actually makes quite a bit of sense. After Mirag began desiring to leave Mora's service, the Daedric Prince of Knowledge needed to scout for a new servant, which is where he found the last Dragonborn. But being the puny level 10 that you were at the time of receiving the letters, Hermaeus knew that you needed to become more powerful to defeat Mirak and become a worthy servant. And so, Hermaeus Mora began to metaphorically fatten the Dragonborn up with words of power and dragon souls so that you could become the servant of the Daedric Prince. Number 6. Augur of Dunlane Of all of the factions you can join in Skyrim, none are as mysterious as the College of Winterhold. This guide of mages is far more than an educational facility for those who are magically inclined. The college is also a library, the last remaining defense for Winterhold, and a cesspit of some of the strangest mysteries in the game. The most peculiar of these is the Augur of Dunlane. Despite having more canonical information about the Augur than any other entry on this list, this mystical orb is so complex that many questions about it still remain unanswered. The biggest question of all is just how he managed to turn himself into a glowing magical orb. Masking around some of the higher-ranking teachers will only give us half the answer. They explain that the Augur was a former Breton student who was gifted in all schools of magic, but especially restoration. However, at some point, somehow, this student grew too focused on how much power he could acquire. After a failed experiment, the student became a glowing ball of magical energy and was subsequently tucked away in the midden, along with all sorts of other horrors. But that hardly explains how he found himself in this position. Like all other unsolved mysteries, we can only infer from the little information that we have. Given that the Yorga was once a Breton, many people believe that the use of sacred reach magic was involved to achieve the non-corporeal state the Yorga finds themselves in. For starters, there's the plethora of skeletal effigies found all around the Midden, which are not unlike the ones we can find at Forsworn camps. Then, there's the term Augur itself, which outside of the Augur Dunlane is only ever used in the legend of Red Igor, when it talks about the Augurs of Reach prophesying a Reachman king who would unite all under his name. 
There's also the prevailing theory that the Orga's apotheosis is closely tied to the destruction of Winterhold, as both events occurred at the same time, and it's strongly implied that the Orga either became the ball of magic during the destruction of the college, or is even the reason the college was destroyed in the first place. Regardless, the Orga remains one of the most mysterious characters in Elder Scrolls lore, and for the foreseeable future, it's likely going to remain that way. Subscribe to fall damage, you milk drinker.